Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So today I figured since deposits are due soon or you might be getting multiple acceptances rolling in now that the first day of acceptances has passed, I would put this video together of some things to consider when choosing between multiple dental schools to figure out which one is the one for you to attend. And I also think that these factors could be really helpful if you're deciding where you want to apply for dental school. So if you're currently working on your personal statement and you're going to be applying this summer, definitely stick around for this video. I do have a video similar to this that I made back when I was applying to dental school, so I will link that below because there is some additional information there that could help you with applying and could also help you deliberating between a few schools. So I have six kind of things to consider and then different questions you can ask yourself about each of those things. So first thing is make sure you're getting the real info. You want to be talking to students. Admissions are helpful and they're a great place to go to ask questions because sometimes they do know more than the students, but the students are the ones living the life every day and that's the experience that you're going to be having. So I highly recommend seeking out dental students at that specific school. Even better, some things to consider is you want to talk to someone that is currently working in SimLab, so likely a D1 or a D2, and then you'd also want to find someone that's actually working in the clinic, so a D3 or a D4, because the first year and second year students aren't going to have the same perspectives about the patient care and clinical opportunities as someone that's actually in it, and someone that's maybe a fourth year student might not have the most up-to-date info on what's happening in SimLab for their D1. So some ways to find these people. One thing is I just made a mentorship video to connect you with students at a bunch of different dental schools, so I will link that below, and I also have a part two coming out next week, but you can use that. You could also use the DAT Admissions Facebook group through DAT Bootcamp. They have a page under their files tab where you can find dental students at every school, a couple people that you're able to Facebook message and ask questions. You can also use Instagram and try to find dental students on there at various schools, and I, of course, am a resource for you. For any questions about Michigan, I can try to answer them or find you someone that will. And I also know a lot of dental students all around the country through YouTube and social media that I've been able to connect with. So those are great places to start to try to find people that attend these schools that you're considering between. Another thing you want to keep in mind when you're trying to talk to a first year and a third year or whatever it may be, you also want to find people that are similar to the pathway you're going to be taking in dental school when you're asking about their experiences. So for me, I would care most about what's the experience of someone that wants to go into general dentistry. But you might care about endodontics or perio or peds or someone that's contemplating between different specialties. So try to find someone that's in the same position as you. That way you can get a perspective that's going to be most similar to what you would have as an experience at their school. I'll quickly run through some questions that you could ask, but there's also going to be some more in the next five factors that I'm listing. You want to ask about their happiness at the school. Would they choose this school again if they had an opportunity to go somewhere else? What are some of their favorite things? What are some things they wish were improved? How has their overall experience been? Does their class get along? What do they do for fun? What do they do outside of school? Where do they live? How do they like the area? Those are some things that can get you a good feel for what it's like to really be a student there. So the next two factors are both related to location. So first would be the location and the overall atmosphere. And one of the best ways to figure this out is of course visiting the city that the school is in and visiting the school and campus itself if you're able to. I know right now you're not able to, so an idea that I had was asking either admissions to put together a virtual tour of the school for you, or if you find one of these students, ask them to give you a virtual tour over FaceTime or Zoom or something, just so you can get a feel for the building. And like I said, if you're able to safely visit at least the town that this program is in, I think that that could be really beneficial for getting a feel if this is somewhere you actually want to spend four years of your life. Another thing you want to ask yourself is, do you like this place? Is it somewhere you want to be for four years? Do you like the nightlife? Do you like if it's pet friendly or not? Do you like the parking situation or transportation? Do you like the hiking or outdoorsy opportunities? Like if that's something that you're looking for, you want to compare how these different programs would line up with that. And another thing that you want to consider about the location is if dentists graduating from this school end up sticking around in this location. And if that's the case, is this somewhere you want to live for possibly the rest of your life? Obviously that can change, but if you feel like you're going to be at this school and networking in this general community and you're going to end up getting a job there, 
that's a pretty big commitment and that was something that I really was heavily considering when I was between a few schools for my dental school decision was do I really want to practice in blank town for the rest of my life and sometimes the answer was no and that gave me a good another reason that I really loved Ann Arbor and the surrounding area. Final thing for location, of course, is cost of living. That varies at all different schools, especially whether it's more suburban or more of a downtown community. It's going to be a lot more expensive if it is a city or downtown. Quickly going to throw in a little plug for my video of why I chose University of Michigan School of Dentistry. Those are just some of the things. I feel like I didn't even cover everything, but if you're thinking about UMich, that could be another video to check out if you haven't already seen it. And the fourth factor, in my opinion, the most important factor is can you afford this school? Unfortunately, a school that may be your dream school would not be the smartest financial decision if you do have multiple offers. I highly encourage you to talk to the financial aid offices at all of the schools that you are considering and even possibly consult a financial planner or at least talk to someone in your life that has some insight onto how money works, how debt works, and how your loan or payment would look over time if you're taking out some of these schools are close to $500,000 in loans. So I highly encourage you to choose the program that would be the most financially responsible option. That is the biggest reason I think of why I made my decision. The fifth factor is your class. So are these people that you're going to get along with? And hopefully in the past couple weeks, if you had multiple acceptances or once you do get a few acceptances, you'll be joining some kind of group me or Facebook group and you can already get a feel for who was accepted and who could be your potential classmates. That could be a way to start deciding if this is a group you're gonna mesh with. You can also think about, do I know anyone else attending this program from my undergrad or a family friend or something? And that could be a good way to get a feel for what your environment of your class is gonna be like. But also, that's another thing to talk to current students about. Do students get along? How are the relationships between classes? Is there mentorship? Are people friends? Do they hang out outside of school? Do they live together? Does everyone kind of live in a certain area of town? Just what's the environment like between these people that you're going to be with for four years? And another thing about your class is class size. So are you going to be divided up in half for most of your lectures? Half of you are in sim lab, half of you are in lecture, and then you flip-flop? So you're really only getting to know a small portion of the class? Or are you all together the whole time? Is that a bigger number? Is that a smaller number? And what do you want? Because I know for me, I liked that Michigan was kind of in between. It wasn't super small, but it wasn't huge either, and we do all stay together for all of our activities throughout the day. And the last thing, factor number six, is your clinical questions that you want to be asking. And again, I think these are great things to ask someone that's currently in clinic, because if you asked me about the clinical competency requirements or the CEUs, I would not have an answer for you because it's not something I'm engaging with at this point in my experience as a first year. So, some of the things, I wrote them down on my phone here. So first is, when do you start interacting with patients? I know for us at Michigan, we start our very first year assisting, and then you also wanna ask, when are you actually being the care provider? So again, for us, it's end of second year, early third year. So we get in really quickly and start at least interacting with patients on a semi-regular basis. The second thing that I really don't think is that big of a deal, but again, it doesn't affect me directly right now, but do you have to find your own patients. Again, at my school we don't, so maybe that's a reason I don't think it's that big of a deal if you did. I know that some schools I interviewed at definitely you had to do some recruiting on your own, but it didn't seem like it was a big deal because they still had resources to help you do the recruiting. So I don't think this is a huge factor on your list, but it's just something to consider so you know what you're getting yourself into. Another thing is, is there a process for transitioning patients between students that are graduating into the incoming class? And do patients stick with one provider for most of their time there, or are they bouncing around? Because that creates a really negative patient experience if they're seeing a different student dentist every time they come into the school. So I would look for a program that keeps patients in little clusters and they're always seeing the same one or two providers. Because because I think that patients will be a little bit happier at that program. The next thing that I mentioned at the beginning of this was clinical competency requirements. How are those measured? What are they? If you can perhaps figure that out. And I personally think you want to go to a school that has higher competency requirements or higher number of procedures that you need to complete because that's just pushing you to be a better future dentist. Some schools are going to have lower numbers or perhaps this school has more crowns than this one, but this one requires 
um, fewer endo than the other one. So there might not be an exact like this is for sure the best school, but I think it's a cool thing to ask and to compare between different programs that you're looking at. And like I said, sometimes they're called um, competency requirements. Um, at Michigan we call them CEUs. I don't even know what that stands for, like I said, because I'm so early into dental school and I won't be in clinic for a couple more years. You also want to know about digital dentistry and how integrated technology is into this program. Does the school have Sarek machines, which are the 3D milling machines, and how often do you actually get to use them? Because some schools have these resources, but they're not integrated into the curriculum. They don't teach you how to use them or they don't encourage using them in treatment planning, and some schools will highly encourage them and you'll be able to work really closely with faculty and get really skilled at different aspects of dental technology. And the last thing that I think is incredibly important and I'm really happy to know that is at a lot of dental schools is outreach experience and opportunities to become a competent provider on your own. So through outreach experiences, obviously you're doing great service for your community that you're placed in, but you're also working with a lot less supervision and that's giving you a chance to be the one thinking, the one making the decisions, the one making maybe the tough calls, not being able to be checked all the time, and that's going to be I'm sure a little intimidating, but that's what's going to build your confidence as a provider. So I think any school that has those programs and has the longer programs, the better, is another really important thing to consider when making your decision. All right, that's everything that I thought of for this video. If you guys have anything that you think is really important for making your decision, definitely leave a comment below and I would be looking forward to reading those. And if you also did wanna let me know what program you decided on, if you already did make your deposit somewhere, especially if you're joining me at Michigan next year, I am so excited to say hi to you all in the halls one day but thank you all so so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one